No fucking way, new Deep Rock season, let's go. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell, hell no, man. What the fuck? It's whatever, I'll just re-roll it. It's not a big deal. Okay. Are you serious right now, bro? What is up guys, it's John, and today I decided to hop back on Deep Rock for the release of Season 5 to check out the new mission type. In doing so, it gave me the idea to go over what I feel are the best mission types in the game and why I enjoy them as someone who has over 600 hours. Which to some may not seem like a lot, but in my opinion I feel like I probably have similar views as other players with my experience. That being said, obviously these are all just opinions and some may be hot takes, no doubt. Feel free to hate on me in the comments, or don't. You know, that's not a requirement of viewing this video. Let's get into it with the first mission listed on the wiki. Starting things off with Mining Expedition. Mining Expeditions give what I consider the true experience of Deep Rock. There's a good mix of exploration mixed with combat, and every clash truly gets to shine. You really get the vibe that they created the game with this mission type in mind. While extremely basic, there's definitely something to be said about the fun there is to be had in a mission more designed around exploring and traversal versus non-stop combat. And it can be a nice breakaway from other available mission types. The cave length and size is generally larger than average and continues to span multiple rooms and throw hordes of enemies at you at a slower pace, making the ability to play and successfully get through these levels solo much easier. Their length can take away from some of the enjoyment on longer play sessions, but they seem to have the highest chance of events or bonuses, at least in my playing experience. Overall, one of the better missions to play solo or in a team. And because of that, I'm going to slot Mining Expedition in the A tier. Next up is Egg Hunt. Egg Hunt is easily one of my favorite mission types. It really allows you to complete the mission at whatever pace you'd like. If you are unaware, every egg that you pull has a chance to spawn a horde of glyphids, making team communication very necessary. On the other hand, if you'd like to pluck multiple at once, watch chaos ensue as doing so will increase the size of the swarm that is spawned. The cave systems on these levels tend to be much smaller and only spawn a few rooms typically of larger size. This also plays into your ability to complete them at whatever pace you'd like to, making Egg Hunt one of the fastest missions to clear if you're ready for the challenge of plucking every egg and depositing them into Molly as fast as you can as enemies race to your position. Egg Hunt is one of the only missions that you can truly feel like your backs are being pressed against the wall as resources dwindle amongst the non-stop swarms pursuing the dwarves. Very fun and very chaotic. I love Egg Hunt and its design, A tier. On-Site Refining While not in the original game and added in a later patch, On-Site Refining remains to be one of the favorites amongst all dwarves, green and graybeards alike, typically spawning you in some of the most diabolical situations, leaving the team with no ammo, no health, no resources, and a fight against the clock before the next wave of enemies approaches. This mission type is not for the faint of heart at higher difficulties. These levels are simplified by the use of an experienced driller. Cutting a straight path for the pipelines is essential to making sure you have the best access when repairs need to be made. These missions are generally very fun, but after a while it starts to wear on you with the amount of repairs that need to be made during the second phase of the level. If I had to change one thing about them, it would be to reduce the amount of repairs that need to be made or adapt the same system the new mission type uses to allow the players to upkeep on the pipes so that they won't break at all during the mission as long as they're being protected from damage as starting the refining process cues the horde to attack. The levels are doable solo, and using Bosco to help repair and create the lines is a nice touch. Going back to the point about Triller, they also feel very tedious as other classes just don't have the ability to manipulate the terrain the way he does, making pipe layouts a lot more difficult or impossible for certain classes, especially when they're too high off the base of the cave. The cave layouts are generally similar to Egg Hunt missions with having a very large, wide, spanning cave system that creates a fun space for you to play and fight in, but not much to be said in the way of exploration. Overall, I'd put on-site refining in the A tier. Salvage Operations Salvage Operations makes a small part of exploration with a large part in area defense and cave clearing, spawning you in a cave system that forces the players to find the lost equipment the dwarves must put together multiple mules and guide them back to the drop pod later using the same drop pod to escape and complete the level after doing various tasks to defend its satellite triangulation and refueling process. These levels are very fun and tend to keep up the energy throughout. Typically upon entering the cave holding the lost equipment, you're greeted with a swarm of enemies and blinking lights alluding to the equipment's location. This can sometimes be overwhelming for newer players on a higher difficulty as these can be some of the most difficult in the game if not prepared for the challenge. And while this challenge does not typically come into later stages of the level, it can be difficult for you to successfully clear the room and assess your needs after withstanding hordes of enemies. Communication is key, as having someone collect nitro for a resupply and others repair the equipment is a must. This level is more often than not the one that really tests the ability of players to understand the role that their class provides as a team. 
The driller being able to make extra space during the triangulation and fuel pod drop is key to making sure you're not pushed outside of the zones during processing. The gunner shields being a near necessity while the team is getting up close and personal with the bugs, as each member inside the small zone increases the speed of which it relays information to command. The engineer with the ability to manipulate the pathing of bugs and protect the team using platforms by creating a shelf above or around them and overall area defense with turrets and proximity mines can allow him to dispatch waves fast and the scout doing what he does best by flying through the room with great lighting doesn't exactly shine ironically during the final phases of this level but again is necessary for his use in resource collection and traversal throughout the level. Overall this mission is another fan favorite and very fun to play. While it can be difficult solo due to the lack of Bosco's repair help, it is a challenge many are willing to endeavor. Overall I would give salvage operations an S tier. It's a very fun level to play and in my opinion it's one of the most replayable levels to play. Point Extraction feels like one of the most exploitable missions in the game when it comes to speedrunning. That being said, exploits aren't necessarily a bad thing in this case, as due to the battle pass design never being changed since its original inception, the easiest way to complete them is still by mission completion regardless of length. This means that if you're trying to complete any of the battle passes as quickly as possible, your goal should always be to speedrun missions. The fastest missions remain to be Point Extraction, whether solo or teamed, with the quickest I been able to record just under three minutes. When you are trying to speedrun, these levels are still very fun and enjoyable as they drop you into a small cave system with varying large rooms isn't much in the way of exploration similar to other mission types, but the combat is near constant and your objectives are simple. Collect the aquas scattered through the cave. The gleaming blue rocks resonate in a way similar to that of a green jaded stone. They're easy enough to collect in most scenarios, given that you aren't unlucky enough to have one spawn in the ceiling of the cave, but generally speaking, on some levels there will be an extra stone that spawns on the map that isn't needed for the completion of the main objective of the level. While symbol in design still remains to be one of the most fun levels to play because of its simplicity, making it enjoyable at any point in your play session. Overall, I'd say Point Extraction is easily an S tier level mission. Let me know if you disagree. Escort Duty this might be my first hot take in the video, but in my opinion, Escort Duty is one of the worst design mission types in the game, and it's not for the reason that you'd expect. Similar to another mission type in the game, which I have not covered yet, the pacing of these levels is near unbearable and starts to really drag on you after you've done so many. These missions feel like the final boss level, quote unquote. The level that you reserve for the very end of a promotion or the end of a play session as they really require a lot more time to complete and require a specific play style just to complete them in a form of how you go about running the level. For example, if an event is discovered during the process of the escort, you'll more than likely have to backtrack after you complete the main objective because if not, you'll be forced to choose if you want to leave someone to protect the drill during the event or have the entire team complete the event leaving the drill unguarded. This really isn't a huge deal and most teams can get over that, however the main reason that these levels feel like a slog is the refueling process. I think it wouldn't be so bad if you didn't have to refuel the drill, but needing a special tool to mine the oil, then the rate at which you mine it, and then it will always seemingly spawn in the most inconvenient spot, all culminates into what I believe is one of the worst experiences that you can have in the entire game. Which is weird that it's shared in the same level of one of the most exciting experiences you can have in the game in the form of cracking open the final layers of the core while clinging onto it with everything that your team has. After riding a giant drill to its destination, the build-up and anticipation is fun for the first few times that you experience it, but again the pacing of the level is entirely thrown out the window by the refueling process. Overall, a level design that I believe splits the player base into some categories with some players not caring about the pacing, and others being upset at how long it takes to complete these levels and the effort required with the same end result as any other regular mission type. It always feels wrong when you can end a point extraction 3 minutes and yield similar results as a 35 minute long mission. But let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree with this one. Overall, I'm going to put it in the C tier. Elimination. I believe Elimination will always be in a similar vein to Mining Expedition. In the way that I truly believe the mission type was designed to evoke a certain feeling in the player and the curiosity that drives you to explore the caves, find the egg, pop it, and discover what's lurking inside ready to hatch giving you a different fight depending on the spawn. Which is awesome and fun, although these levels have always felt more repetitive than their mining expedition counterparts, leaving more players to reserve these levels for the promotions or deep dives, never going out of their way to specifically play them out of pure enjoyment and love of the mission type. This was proven back when they added multiple new boss enemies to the game that did give the mission type a much needed variety, though this seems to largely backtrack to where it was before their addition. Most do share the opinion that the new bosses are amazing and fun to fight, but they do feel a lot more exciting to stumble upon in a random different level rather than going out of your way to purposely find them and fight them in the mission specifically designed for that, leaving Elimination to be a testing ground for some builds designed to take down bigger enemies faster. Overall, Elimination isn't a bad mission or an entirely unenjoyable experience, but not the level that most people go out of their way to play when they decide they want to take a break from following an assignment. 
I would say that Elimination is still more enjoyable than Escort Duty, so I'm going to put it in the B tier. Industrial Sabotage. As you can tell by the intro to this video, Industrial Sabotage isn't one of my favorite missions, and not even close. In my opinion, that is the worst mission in the entire game and should be solely reserved for events, deep dives, or specific assignments. Now before you get your pitchforks and flaming candles, understand that when Sabotage was introduced to the game, it was at this time that the bots were also the most unenjoyable thing in the game to play against. They hit you hard, they took less damage, were harder to hit, and had less weaknesses. Combine this with a level where you're cranking up the amount spawned during a season where we had a higher likelihood of encountering them as well in other missions, yeah, it was a bit of a disaster and they were nerfed somewhat soon after. Now what I do enjoy about these levels it's exploring by following the leads up to the substations that power the caretaker's defense shields. The caretaker boss is as well super unenjoyable for the most part. Nothing too special and I believe what really hurts and emphasizes these levels to be bad is that it makes some of the classes feel bad to play. Driller specifically feels very bad in these levels and takes a big backseat as they can't do much to fight the caretaker. While they can dig tunnels and help the team take cover from an onslaught of bots and damage, they themselves have very little impact in the fight. In short, there isn't much I can think to do in the form of changing this level itself to make it more enjoyable. I think the mechanics surrounding the bots just aren't super fun to play with. The best thing that they could do to this mission is make it appear less in the game. And I feel like it should have a similar position to escort duty and making them both appear only in special occasions or situations while having greater rewards than regular levels. Because of this, I'm going to be ranking Industrial Sabotage as a D tier. And now finally for the newest addition to Deep Rock. These levels start by having the dwarves find multiple node sources that require a scanner to be attached. Once all nodes are found, the drill elevator drops. Once it arrives, all dwarves load up. It begins its drilling cycle to a vault-like location where a very rare, valuable mineral is found. Overall, these levels are very fun, and I believe that they took a lot of the feedback given about the escort duty and used in a positive way. I couldn't imagine the drag it would have caused if the drill stopped to require refueling, and the fact that you're able to prevent a stop at all is amazing. Where most teams get hung up on is the part of the level where the nodes must be found. As time progresses, most doors will learn how to understand the indicators on the upper left of the screen which tell you if you're heading in the right direction or even in the correct room. At first this can be tricky, but once you get it down the process will be greatly increased. The enemies come at you in a more constant form similar to something that of a mining expedition level. The cave systems themselves are also designed more akin to them, and these levels feel like they do take quite a lot of inspiration from earlier designs, which is okay. Where it differs is in the case of vertical assault from the glyphids, practically raining down on the players from above whilst they're drilling into the vault. This onslaught is very fun to be a part of and is just the right amount of fun mixed with chaotic back against the wall feeling, especially when you see something like a bulk start to crawl in the crater, you better clutch up and hope your gunner is experienced. Once players discover how to use the indicators effectively, I actually believe that this will become one of the quickest levels to complete considering the players can actually control the pacing of the level very easily from start to finish. There just isn't a whole lot holding you back, especially if your team has a seasoned driller. With that in mind, I'm going to be putting the deep scan level in the A tier. I hope you enjoyed my tier list video, guys. If not, let me know in the comments below what you agreed and disagreed with. I'd love to read them or reply. As always, thanks for watching and staying to the end. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Peace.